Advent blessings to you this day as we continue in our devotion series, taking the names of Jesus from our tree and using the book Advent in plain sight. Today we take another card off the tree and we discover another name we use for Jesus. That name, Savior. Jesus Christ, Savior. Now, Savior is another really common word or descriptor or name we use for Jesus. So I'm going to turn to a book we don't read very often, Titus. Chapter 3 of Titus and see what Titus has to say about when using this title. Titus is saying, For we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to His mercy, by the washing and regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Jesus Christ came to save, saving us from sin and death and destruction and offering us the joy and mercy of eternal, everlasting life. So Jesus Christ is indeed our Savior. As we continue in our book, Advent in Plain Sight, today we turn to Matthew chapter 3, verses 7 through 12, and we talk about the axe at the root of the tree. As we continue to use the tree as our item this week. So Matthew chapter 3, verses 7 through 12. Hear now these words from God. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, John the baptizer said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not suppose you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham for our father. For I say to you, from these stones God is able to rise up children of Abraham. The axe is already laid at the root of the trees. Therefore every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. As for me, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to remove his sandals. But he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he has thoroughly cleared his threshing floor. And he will gather his wheat into the barn, and he will burn up the chaff in the unquenchable fire. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Woo. John the Baptizer appears every Advent for at least one Sunday, sometimes two. This year we've talked about him twice. He comes. We cannot escape his uh, brutally honest words at Advent, can we? Just as the world is singing and cheering songs of Santa and Jingle Bells, John the Baptizer calls us all a brood of vipers and warns us with, that right now the axe is lying at the root of the trees and to bear good fruit or else. The juxtaposition jars us on these days where we ache to hear the beloved Christmas carols and instead get brooding Advent hymns and boring Advent hymns that are in minor key, often in minor keys. We want joy to the world, and we get day of wrath, the day of burning. So what gives? Why the harsh words in a season of twinkling lights and cheer and joy? Why threat of destruction is this supposedly most wonderful time of the year, isn't it? 
John the Baptizer, in his calls to prepare for the coming Messiah, refused to let us go without utter seriousness and honest self-examination. No cheap grace here. No overlooking our real need for a Savior. No imagining that even if we were all the religious trappings of righteousness, even if we follow all the holy rituals that our lives really show forth, the love and will of the God who comes to bring release to the captives and good news to the poor. None of us can presume that we have a pass to go to the front of the line when Jesus comes. None of us can presume we get a gold star for faithfulness. God knows the heart. Jesus inspects the fruit we bear, not the ties we use or the titles we use or the benefits we voice. The author says, a wise and thoughtful friend who happens to be a psychiatrist gave some advice. Listen to what people say, but believe what they do. Jesus, too, believes what we do or what we fail to do. And we make ready for the earthly arrival. How do our words and actions match or conflict with each other? When Jesus surveys the terrain of our lives, our bank statements, social media posts, interactions with strangers and families, and the way and places we exert our time and energy and influence, what trees are barren, fruitless, good for nothing but fire? And what trees are overflowing with ripe fruit? In his book, You Are What You Love, The Spiritual Power of Habit, James Smith argues that we are what we love, and we may not love what we think we love. He encourages us to do a liturgical audit of our lives. He writes, look at your daily, weekly, monthly, and annual routines. What are the things you do that, that do something to you? What are the secular liturgies of your life? What vision of good life is carried in those liturgies? What story is embodied in those practices? What kind of person do they want you to become? John the Baptizer refuses to let us welcome Jesus without first carefully preparing and examining the topography of our lives and doing some serious pruning of those trees that we may love but do not bear fruit. We cannot presume that we love what we say we love. We need to be fruit inspectors, taking note of when our words and our actions aren't lining up. Now is our opportunity to repent and welcome Jesus' refining fire. So i got a question for you. When you survey the landscape of your life, are there fruitless trees? that need to be cut down and thrown into the fire? How do you deal with John the Baptizer showing up every Advent? Do we just quickly glance over him? Or do we truly embrace him, calling us to prepare for Jesus' arrival? Let us pray. Dear God, you send messengers to help us prepare for the coming of our Savior. They came in old garb, proclaiming words we did not always welcome. We do not want to see ourselves among the brood of vipers, and yet we know there is much in our lives that does not resemble your ways. As we make ready for Emmanuel, grant us the courage to be rightly where our words and deeds do not match. When we repent and turn towards you, you are merciful and eager to forgive. Take our barren trees and turn them into a burning fire that points to Christ Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace this day.